Can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, please put it in the comment section that you can before we start the class. Good morning, how are you guys? Good morning. Uh, if you can hear me perfectly, please put it down in the comment section below that you can hear me perfectly so that I can start the evidence class as soon as possible. Good morning, Bolari Wakoride. How are you? Good morning, Usman Askira. Okay, yes, you can hear me. Okay, so how are you guys? Uh, it's been, uh, since yesterday, we had our first class on res Gestate Doctrine. Good morning, and yes, I can hear you from Judith Aim. Thank you very much, and welcome to my channel again. Yesterday, we had our first class on, um, on uh, res Gestate, where I spoke about the doctrine good morning ayodeji fawali thank you very much for coming to my channel this morning so yesterday we had our first our first um video on common law uh, doctrine of res gestae we looked at certain things what were the cases that we looked at yesterday we looked at the case of r versus Bedingfield. uh we looked at the case of r versus christie we looked at the case of r versus Tepper. We looked at the civil case of David versus Fortia. And also we looked at the case of Thompson versus uh, Taravan. No, Travron rather. Versus Travron. Now, all these cases spoke about the strict contempo Raneous rule. All these cases spoke about the strict contemporaneous rule that says that when a statement is to be made, you know, and for that statement to be admitted as part of res gesti evidence, you know, yesterday I already told you about res gesti evidence and why 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 should we regard res gesti evidence as a relevant evidence? I illustrated using evidence. Um, the evidence to be admitted before the court has to be a fact in issue. If it's not a fact in issue, then it will not be relevant. Or evidence that are to be declared relevant by the court of law. So res gestae evidence falls under evidence to be declared relevant by the court of law. I already said that yesterday. And then I told you that when I, I gave all the fact and judgment of this case and the reason for the judgment. And then I told you about the strict contemporaneous rule. But today we are going and, um, and also I also talked about the sufficient good morning, Semu. Nuruddin Bolaji and welcome to the class. So today we are going to be talking about the sufficient contemporaneous rule. Sorry, we already spoke about it yesterday rather. Today we are talking about the Nigerian jurisdiction on res gestae and how the Nigerian court has applied it. So I want to illustrate what we did uh, yesterday first. So now for, for, for the uh, sufficient contemporaneous rule, we spoke about the case of uh, R versus uh, Andrew. Yes, we spoke about the case of Ratin versus R. Ratin versus R, then uh, R versus Nye and Loan, and we also spoke about the case of R versus Andrew. These were the three cases we spoke about yesterday that that uh, uh, we discussed under sufficient contemporaneous rule. Contemporaneous. 
room. So we have the strict, uh, the strict contemporaneous rule and sufficient contemporaneous rule. Both rules spoke up there, uh, speaks to resgate the evidence, you know, under, under the common law. But then when we are talking about the Evidence Act, that's what is applicable in Nigeria. Can we say that res gesti falls uh, as part of our laws in such a way that when a statement is made, for example, the, uh, what I gave yesterday, the example I gave yesterday while I was teaching, I said that there were armed robbers that went to Banana Island to go and rob a particular man. And then while the robbery was going on in the house at Banana Island, the gate man had gone short and immediately he said, they have killed my ogao. Now, that statement of the gate man that he, uh, at the point where he heard the gunshot, good morning, what have I missed? Nothing so much. Uh, Olivia, you have not missed a lot. So, uh, as at the point where the uh, uh, gate man heard the gunshot, and then he said, he said, oh, they have killed my ogre. The question is, can the words, they have killed my ogre, that statement, can it be admitted into the court as evidence before the court? That's basically the question that we are asking. And so in Nigeria, under the Nigerian law, under the Evidence Act, can we say that res gestrate doctrine is applicable? Simple. So if this is your first time of coming to my channel, then I want to say a very big welcome to you. My name is Ola Yeni. Dear Kolola Daniels, popularly known as Dear Conspector. I have not been saying that uh, very often. But yes, I'm Dear Conspector. And uh, uh, welcome to my live session. Welcome to my live session where I'll be uh, teaching you uh, the applicable, the applicability of, you know, res geste under, under uh, Nigerian Evidence Act. If this is your first time, please make sure that you click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And also you can drop it in the comment section, live comment section, so that I can, you know, appreciate my, you know, newcomers in the house. So if this is your first time of coming to my channel, you can drop it so that I can thank you for coming. So thank you very much. I would like you to have your evidence act with you because section four of the evidence act is very very relevant but when we are looking at it we have to look at the second one good morning rafiat shitu welcome to my live session when we are looking at the evidence the evidence uh, act the evidence law whether or not res gets straight doctrine is going to apply we have to look at the former one so under the evidence act the former evidence act how did the res gets the evidence apply because we are going to be looking at how the judges Judge the best guest evidence under the former rule of uh, uh, on former evidence act, and then we are now going to look at this evidence act, this new one. So, in, in today's video, we are going to be answering two questions, two very salient questions in relation to this. The first question that uh, we are going to answer would be, uh, are section four. Sorry, is section four res guest and sorry, are section four and res guest are they the same thing? Rather, as section four. Uh, of the Evidence Act, the new law, and rest gets stay under the common law. You know that they have moved away from the strict contemporaneous rule and they are now in the sufficient contemporaneous rule. Can we say that they are the same? Can we say that the sufficient contemporaneous rule is the same with what our section 4 of the Evidence Act says or one is different from the other? And to, the, and to what extent can we talk about their difference? To what extent are they different? That's number one. Number two, a Nigerian court justified in admitting fact based on res geste in total disregard of section four. So the first one we are going to answer. So I think we are going to answer the second one first. Let's answer the second one first. Can Nigerian court uh, give judgment solely on the res geste doctrine of common law as regards evidence admissibility? Do you understand? A particular statement to be admissible before the court. Can the court admit a statement based on the doctrine of common law and disregard section 4 then after that we will now answer whether or not whether or not section 4 and res geste are in fact different so let us start with the first one now um the the, the first the, the question i told you we're going to answer first is can we say that uh, uh, section 4 can we say that a uh, nigerian court can admit evidence now according to under the old act, let us start with that. Under the old act, old evidence act, according to uh, Aguda and uh, Uwa Diallo, um, Aguda, you know Aguda, the, the, the author of what we currently use, and Uwa Diallo, they both said that yes, 
the common the, the our courts rather our nigerian courts can admit evidence based on the common law doctrine of res geste while totally disregarding section the the, the equivalent of section four this uh, new section four in the former one was section seven do you understand so when when i'm referring to section seven i'm referring to the old act when i'm referring to section four i'm referring to the new act do you understand so when, when you are talking about evidence Res get state evidence under the section, uh, section, the former act, it was section 7. But now, they, they said that Nigerian, Nigerian courts, uh, good morning, uh, Koride Yusuf, uh, you're welcome to my channel. Now, they said that Nigerian courts can admit evidence, you know, based on uh, the res get state with total disregard of the section 7 according to them why did they say that they said that while looking at section 5a of the former evidence act which says that nothing shall preclude admission of any evidence which will apart from the provision of the act be admissible do you understand look at in the previous section nothing shall preclude the admission of any evidence which means that every evidence that has not been stated in the act would be admissible except when the act says it shall not be admissible so if the act is silent on it then it shall not be admissible so according to the old act the old act um gave room for uh, common law rules you know uh good morning Adi Emita with Deborah you're welcome to my channel Auntie Debbie good morning ma so as I was saying now the old act opened the door for common law rules to be admitted as part of our evidence rules. So res geste, which is a common law doctrine, can be used, can be a basis for a judgment of a court regarding a statement. So this, the judge can say, oh, according to the common law rule, I am admitting this as evidence. But can we say that about the new act? Note that there is no equivalent of Section 5A in our new act. There is no equivalent. Section 5A says nothing would stop uh, the admission of evidence except where this act says that it shall not be admitted. So you are supposed to look at Section 5A. And Section 5A has two, two, two hands. You know, it says, oh, any other thing apart from what has been stated in this section shall apply as evidence i mean in this act shall apply as evidence so the only time it will not apply is when this act says it will not apply do you understand so when you are talking about res geste evidence under the old law according to aguda and what they law they said res geste evidence is forming part of our nigerian law by virtue of section 5a that allows um rules and laws guiding evidence apart from the act to be applicable except when the act says it's not applicable and since there is no part of the act that says that res geste evidence shall not be applicable then res geste evidence is therefore applicable as part of evidence under nigerian law but like i told you earlier section 5 has no equivalent to what is currently obtainable under uh, 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 the evidence act of 2011 that is the new evidence act you can't find section 5a under the new evidence act do you understand so when when when, when you're looking at it, it it is my submission actually that they are wrong actually it is my submission that aguda and why they are wrong the reason i said they are wrong is because there is already an equivalent of section 7 in the act if, if, if you look at it so the act already creates for res geste that's or not that it mentioned res geste, but it said the same principle that you could find under the res geste common law doctrine. So why then are you saying that we should apply the common law doctrine when there is already a section that says the same thing about this common law doctrine in question? So according to them, they said that the act was silent on common law doctrines. So because the act was silent, I um, mean, sorry, the act was silent on res geste. So because the act was silent on res geste, it is applicable by virtue of section 5A. But I am saying the act was not silent because section 7 spoke about this res geste in question. And I told you that section 7, which is of the old act, and section 4, which is of this new act, are the same thing do you understand they are the same thing so and then you also have to look at the provisions of uh, 
section 2 of the miscellaneous act which says that common law and equity are applicable in, in, in Nigeria except if other provision is made by a federal legislation. Do you understand? Now, you know, according to Aguda and Uwadialu, they said that because the act was silent on what is termed res geste, by virtue of section 5A of the Evidence Act, the res geste doctrine of common law is therefore applicable in Nigeria. That means that we can bring the pronouncement of the English court as authority to admitting com uh, res geste evidence in Nigeria. But there is an act which is known as the uh, uh, Mis Miscellaneous Provisions Act, which says that common law and equity are applicable except other provisions are made uh, by, the f by federal enactment. Now, what is the other provisions by federal enactment that has been made here? Section 7. Section 7 already is a provision of a federal enactment, which is of the, of the Evidence Act, that speaks as to res geste. So common law and equity can no longer apply in relation to res geste because we already have Section 7. And of the Miscellaneous Act, we are talking about Section 2 of the Miscellaneous Act. Do you understand the basis for my argument? My argument is that Aguda and Wadialu are wrong to have said that res geste did not fall part of our laws and therefore the, the common law doctrine we apply. I am saying yes, it does, but because they did not use the word res geste, the, 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 the form might not have been described res geste, but the substance in itself is actually the res geste. Do you understand? Uh, and my authority for that is section 7, which when we peruse through, you will see that this is actually res geste. And then my, I also backed it up by saying section 2 says that where there is already a federal enactment on a particular subject matter, the common law and equity on that same subject matter shall not form the basis of authority. Although it is persuasive, but it cannot be the basis of authority on that thing. Aguda and Umadialo are using the common law rules of res geste as the basis of authority to admitting uh, uh, res geste evidence. Do you understand? I'm trying to break it down as, as much as possible so that everybody can, can follow the class. So now that we've answered the first question, or the, 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 the question where I said, a Nigeria court justified in admitting fact based on res geste in total disregard of section 7. No, they are not. That's section 7 of the old law. Now, the old argument of res geste forms or not is no longer even a question because there is no, uh, 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 there is no replica of section 5a in our current evidence act so therefore what we have is section 4 so there's no even oh we can bring evidence to you you cannot bring any evidence that has not been stated by the court uh, by, by the act rather every evidence to be tendered in court has to be such that the act has given authority to it if the act does not give authority to it it's very rare for you to find common law evidence that is being uh, applied as basis for admitting evidence do you understand? Especially res geste. Res geste gets its authority from section 4. So let us, what then is res geste evidence under section 4? Now, when you are reading section 4 of the Evidence Act, I'm presuming that everybody is with their Evidence Act right now. When you are reading section 4, it tells us that facts which do not in issue, that's the first thing that we have to start from. When you are talking about res geste evidence, the first element of res geste evidence is that they are facts. They are facts, I would call them statements, in brackets, statements, although the act does not refer to them as statements, but facts, which do not in issue, which are not in issue. The first thing about res geste evidence is that there are facts that are not in issue. Do you understand? I told you that the evidence that are to be admitted before the court are facts in issue and relevant facts to be declared so by the court. Res geste falls under relevant facts to be declared so by the court. Now, when you're talking about res geste, they are facts which are not in issue but are so connected with a fact in issue as to form the same transaction. Now, number two, they must be connected with a fact in issue. They must be connected with fact in issue. You cannot just bring a fact from somewhere that is not in any way in line 
or have any bearing with the fact in issue and you expect that the court will admit such facts. No. For you to have a rest against the evidence, which most times are statements, they must not be an issue. That's number one. Number two, but they are connected with the fact in issue so much so that they form the same transaction with the fact in issue. They must be so connected with the fact in issue that they form the same transaction. That means the same happening, the same thing that happened. Do you understand? And then, if we then move on to say that uh, they are relevant whether they occur at the same time or at different times and places. Now, number three, whether they occur at the same time, whether they occur at the same time or at different times and places. Now, you know that the first question that I posed earlier was whether or not we can say that res gestae evidence and section 4 are the same thing. So, are we saying that res gestae evidence under section 4 is synonymous with the strict contemporaneous rule or it is synonymous with the sufficient contemporaneous rule? Now, let us look at what res gestae under section 4 is. It says that there are facts which are not in issue, but they must be connected with the fact in issue so as to you know have the same transaction uh, that that might have occurred at the same time either at the same time or at different times and places do you understand so now let us connect it with this when you are talking about strict contemporaneous rule strict contemporaneous rule tells us that when you are talking about a, a statement to be said that statement must be done at the same time where that Thing is happening. Abi, look at the case of R versus Beddington, where the girl's throat had been slashed, and then she came outside to say, Oh, Auntie, see what Harry has done to me. Now, the question is, can that be admitted as res gestion evidence under the strict contemporaneous rule? No. Why? Because the act had already been done before the statement was made was made. The statement must have been made while the act was in progress. If it was made either before or after, or according to what um, the court in Temple versus R said, was made uh, uh, that wasn't so closely with the act done, then we cannot admit it. In Temple versus R, it says that the statement must be so closely with the act done as we, uh, so as for us to say that it forms the same transaction. Do you understand? Now, we can say. Look at this part of the evidence act that says whether they occur at the same time. Whether they occur at the same time. Now the evidence act telling us whether they occur at the same time means that the evidence act wants us to have this strict contemporaneous rule. Because according to the evidence act, it says when those acts are done at the same time, which is the same thing as the strict contemporaneous rule, as stated in the case of R versus Bedington, R versus Christie and the rest, or at different times and places, which is the sufficient contemporaneous rule. So we can see that according to the Evidence Act, we are looking at both the 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 we are looking at both the act that is done and something said uh, at the same time to have the strict contemporaneous rule, or at different times. I'm good to wake up to this. I'm glad to wake up to this. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Ibrahim. Thank you very much for being around again. I really appreciate your presence. So, whether they, are, whether they occur at the same time or at different times and places, I am submitting that for the, for the act to have said whether they occur at the same time, at the same time rather, the act took into cognizance the strict contemporaneous rule. And then when the same act said or at different times and places, the act also took it into cognizance the, uh, con uh, the sufficient contemporaneous rule. Don't forget in the case of Aratin versus R, where, uh, I'm trying to get the fact, of Aratin versus R, where there was somebody who made a call. Somebody who made a call and said, my husband is about to kill me, and then dropped the call. There are two things to note in that particular fact. First of all, that act, the statement that was made, and the person who received the statement were at different places. That's the reason you say at different times and places. 
Now, the statement also related to an act that was not done at the same time when the statement was made. The statement was made before the act was done. He said, my husband is about to kill me, which means that the statement is made before the act was done. And then the person who received it heard the act, heard the statement from different places. Do you understand? They, they were not at the same place. They did not, they, she didn't say that at the time it was done. So this one falls under the sufficient contemporaneous rule. Don't forget that under the common law, not only must it have been done uh, uh, when we're looking at the sufficient contemporaneous rule, the court added one more element when we are talking about the sufficient contemporaneous rule and address gets stay. What was that element? The court must be satisfied. That was the element. Look at, let us read the judgment of Wil Wilberforce. The judgment of Wilberforce was that the judge must have satisfied himself that the statement was so closely made in circumstance of spontaneity or involvement in events such that the probability of concussion or fabrication can be disregarded. According to Lord Wilberforce in Ratin vs. R, he is saying that I am adding another element that the judge must be satisfied that such statements, even though not done at the same time with the act or done at different places, the judge must be satisfied that the, the statement was made in so in, in, in spontaneity that, that uh, there was no room for fabrication. So that particular call that the woman made, According to the judge, the judge was satisfied in that case that that call was such that the woman was terrified at that point. And she was looking, how can I save myself? What can I do for someone to come and help me? I think the best way she could have sought for help at that point was to make a call. Because we're looking at the fact that that case was decided in 1970. In, the, in this day and time, I guess, you know, you'd have just posted it on Instagram or something. And then people will come to your head and say, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Can someone please? But that time, there's no Instagram, there's no Facebook, there's nothing. And you are in the same house with somebody who is about to kill you. What could you have done? Shout? That she could have shouted, yes. But her, uh, probably the whole, the whole place was, was, was empty or something. Maybe no neighbors. And then she thought that the best way she could have saved herself was to call. So such statement made during that call was such that when she looked at the situation that was about to happen, she was terrified and she decided to say, my husband is about to kill me. Do you understand? So, when the act said, uh, when they occur at the same time, the act was talking about R versus Bedenfield, Christie, R versus Christie, R versus Stepper. But when the act said, at, or at different times and places, the act was referring to the sufficient. So, it is my submission as well that when you are talking about the res gesti evidence under section 4, it incorporates both the sufficient uh, evidence, uh, sufficient strict contemporaneous rule and sufficient contemporaneous rule now let us look at nigerian cases and how nigerian judges have decided to you know look at this uh uh what's it called this um particular uh let's look at the case of sule sule salau versus the states our first case is uh, sule a sule salau Salau versus the state. So what happened in the case of Sule Salau? The people heard the cry, Sule is killing me in a room and then found him dead in a pool of blood. The West African Court of Appeal, that's not a Nigerian court, so it was decided a long time ago. The West African Court of Appeal held that the statement was admissible as res gestae evidence. Now, when we are looking at Sule Salau, the people heard what? Sule is killing me and they found him dead in a pool of blood. According to the West African Court of Appeal, they are saying that he's killing, if you listen to, if you understand how English works, he's killing means that he's in the process while the statement was made. Do you understand? I don't think someone will have said he's killing when the act has already been done. Guy has killed me, it's better to, to, to say. Spontan spontaneously, you understand what I'm saying? What case did you talk about? They are the case of Sule Salau, I'm believing that's what you're talking about. The case of Sule Salau versus uh, the state, where the court held that uh, people heard Su uh, uh, Sule is killing me, and then when they entered into the house, they saw him dead in a pool of blood. The court heard 
the court held that the word Sule is killing me would form part of res gesti evidence to be admitted before the court. That is the West African Court of Appeal. Why? Because when you look at the elements of res gesti, number one, it says that uh, the, 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 the statement must be related to the act. What is the case? That is gate of Agassiz. Agassiz versus London Tramway Co. Limited and the case of R versus Blunt, if I'm correct, or R versus Bliss rather. Uh, it was be, it was be made in relation to the act. Sule, when he said Sule is killing me, is in relation to what is currently going on. Do you understand? So that formed it, and then also when we look at the second the, the, the second evidence, sorry, the second requirement, which says it must be contemporaneous. Yes, it's contemporaneous. Except you just want to be excessively ridiculous for what you say is not contemporaneous or unnecessarily unreasonable before you say it's not uh, contemporaneous. So, but then, we are, I think what the court applied in there is a strict contemporaneous rule. Uh, well, it, it's not like it's the strict one, but when you are interpreting it, you would see that it was said at the same time that the act was going on, and that is the strict one. And then we look at the second case of Sunday Appan versus the States. B is Sunday Appan. Sunday Appan versus the States. So what happened in the case of Sunday Akpan versus the state? Now, 12 year old boy testified that he heard his mother shout, Sunday has killed me. And he saw A cutting her with a machet. The court held that it was admissible. Now, a 12 year old boy heard his mother shout, Sunday has killed me. And then he saw, immediately he heard that, he saw his uh, Sunday cutting his mother with a machet. He, heard, he saw Sunday cutting his mother with a machet. The court said that that was admissible. In fact, that is a classic case of strict contemporaneous. The act done at the same time that the statement was made. That is an example, a strict example of the strict contemporaneous rule. And then we look at the, another case of uh, Okaf, or, uh, or Kako, sorry, Okoko versus the state. Okoko versus the state. See, Okoko versus the state. In the case of Okoko versus the state, the witness held a particular person shout, Ovum is, is an endonym, and I cannot pronounce his endonym because it's quite Ovum Marie something something has killed me. <laughs> Let us say Ovu has killed me because let's shorten his name. It's just like saying Osa, Osa Remwe or something like that, and I can't, I can't pronounce it very well. So Ovu has killed me. Now, he heard the, a person shout, Ovu has killed me, and then he saw him in a pool of blood while the other person was trying to run away. The Ovu person was trying to run away. The court held that it formed part of part and parcel of res gesti. So we've looked at this case of Salau versus state. We've looked at the case of Sonde Akba versus state. We've looked at the case of Okoko versus state. All of them were held to be res gesti evidence. But do note that these three cases, the court did not decide them on Section 7 of the Old Evidence Act. The court decided them on the common law principle of res geste, using these cases of Bedingfield and the rest as their authority for admitting them. Do you understand? The court did not decide them, say, say that, oh, the act said. Mm -mm. The court decided them based on the common law doctrine of, uh, of res geste evidence. So you will see well, 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 the reason I said that, look at the case of Udo versus R. The case of Udo versus R. In the case of Udo versus R, D got injured after A had assaulted her. Now, the neighbor's wife uh, met him trying to treat her and asked what happened then d said a put his hand between her legs carried her up and knocked her down this look like wwe wrestling really you carry that leg this slam is this slam dunk what they call that is that you carry somebody up and need the best in them so 
D carried her uh, um, his uh, uh, legs with her hands and then carried her, carried her up and knocked her down. And she reported this to her brother the next day. Now, the court held that it was not part of res geste. Why? Because the court basically <laughs> choked slam. <laughs> it's a choke slam. Oh my God. So the court held that this cannot form part of res geste. Why? Because it, the statement that A carried me up, did choke slam on me and hit me down, was not done when A was doing it. So the court basically followed the strict contemporaneous rule that is, uh, these cases where in Udo versus R, the Nigerian case, that has to show you that the court did not follow what section 7, I told you that section 7 and section 4 are the same thing. The court did not follow this because if the court had followed it, then it would have known that at different times and places, at different times, mean that the act was done, she be their plane. <laughs> The, the, at different times means that the act was done differently from when the statement was made or the act was done in a different place the statement was made in a different place for example in the case of R versus Bedington, the act was done in the room the statement was made in the parlor those are two different places do you understand at two different times so when the statement is made at two different places at two different times we cannot we can see that that is really a stay under the nigerian law but the court in Udo versus R did not use this, this particular uh, uh, rule of res geste and also the sufficient contemporaneous rule. They just outrightly said, oh, res geste evidence was not, was, was, uh, was not applicable. Uh, sorry, yes, res geste evidence was not applicable because it wasn't contemporaneous with the act. It wasn't made at the same time that the act was done. So, you see why I said that we cannot, uh, uh, to, a, to a fact, say that um, res geste evidence is uh, uh, used by the courts in these cases. Now, let us look at uh, Okoko versus the state, where Idigbe JSC, Idigbe JSC in Okoko versus the state, warned against applying the principle of English law in the face of local provision on the same matter. But he still went ahead to admit evidence as part of res geste and not under section 7. I don't know if that is confusion. The judge is saying, oh, he won. He was the one that was won in the, in the same case. He won that, oh, don't, don't uh, let us be wary. Let us be very careful of admitting evidence. And using the authority for admitting such evidence should be based on English law of res geste. We should be wary of doing that. We should be very careful of doing that. Especially when there is already a section in the Evidence Act that provides for such uh, uh, evidence. So, it, what he was, he was saying that since there is section 7, we should disregard res geste. But at the same time, he still used res geste as the basis for admitting. And I'm, I'm lost. What's going on here? So... That's the case of Okoko versus Arrow that I mentioned earlier. The case where he said, Ovu has killed me. And then he saw somebody run away. So, let us look at uh, the case of TK versus the States. TK. Uh, TK versus the States. So, in TK versus the States, the statement was rejected in that particular case for not being sufficiently contemporaneous with the with the facts in issue and then it is it, it then becomes a problem as to why the court are actually not admitting uh, uh this uh sufficient contemporaneous rule why because this ratting versus r was decided in 1970 why uh, why our nigerian court why are they still seeing the authority of res geste on that same strict contemporaneous rule when this thing has been decided several years after, uh, 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 ago and it's still not applicable in nigeria nigerian judges are not still applying it it's it then it then it then becomes a problem because if we look at ikumi versus the state evidence was rejected based on res geste and not on section 7 and it was argued that a different decision would have been reached if the letter had been used in the same, same case of the kumi versus the state you will see that i'm going to i've mentioned one two three four five six the kumi versus the state 
the court still admitted the same res against the evidence of the uh, of the of the common law and still disregarded section 7 of the of the evidence act old evidence act all of them were based the all the judgments were based on on a uh, uh, section was, was based on the arrest guest still don't forget that i mentioned earlier that section 2 of the miscellaneous provisions uh, act says that the, the, when you have a uh, when you have common law and equity in, uh, on the particular issue but on that same issue you have the provision of a federal enactment common law and equity will not apply why are we why is the court applying the rule of common law that is the strict contemporaneous rule of common law to our nigerian cases when we already had at that point section 7 of the evidence act why didn't they apply section 7 in our nigerian cases because if they had applied it then they would have seen this sufficient contemporaneous rule or have different uh, of at different times and at different places and would have applied it instead of the strict contemporaneous rule that was applied in the case of udo versus r do you understand so i guess we are we are bringing the class to a close now and um And it is therefore my conclusion that when you are when you are when you are talking about res gestia evidence in Nigeria, section four should be our authority for res gestia evidence. That should be the sole authority, section four of the Evidence Act. Anything, any judgment that is made on the common law doctrine of res gestia, that judgment is an erroneous judgment because where there is a federal enactment on a particular common law principle, that common law principle cannot be used, you know, when that enactment is still in force in Nigeria. It cannot be used as a basis for judgment. Do you understand that? Now, uh, so just to do a little uh, rundown before I finally close the class, when we're talking about res gesti evidence, we spoke about the types of evidence that uh, that would be admitted before the court, and I told you that evidence would not be admitted except evidence would not be admitted except they are relating to a fact in issue, or except they are relevant and are declared so by the court. I already made a video on relevancy and admissibility in case you want to uh, understand what's the difference between relevancy and admissibility would every fact that is deemed admissible be relevant and would every fact that is deemed relevant be admissible what are the grounds for uh, uh, not admitting irrelevant fact and all that so when I was talking about you know the two types of facts to be admitted, fact in issue and fact declared relevant by the court, I said that res gestae falls on that fact declared relevant by the court. And that's when we started debating what exactly then is res gestae. And I told you that res gestae is the doctrine that evolved from the common law. And there are three rules before you can say we have a res, uh, before the court can admit a res gestae evidence. It must follow three rules. The first one is that the statement must be made with the act. If the statement was made and it was not written, and it was not said in relation to it, this act that is brought before the court, but it said in relation to probably something that happened in the past, then the court will not admit it as res gestae evidence. And the authority for that is our disease versus London Tramway Co Limited, where the court said that the statement of the conductor that he has left the lane six five to six times today cannot be regarded as res gestae evidence binding on this case because the statement was not in relation to this particular incidence of a jamming b that's the driver jamming another person the statement was made in relative uh, in relation to another uh, to another thing that happened previously the four to five times that, that happened it's not in relation to this case and therefore it cannot it cannot be it cannot be admitted and also another case of r versus bliss so there are two cases for the first one the first the second rule is that that word the word must be made by the actor which means the person shooting or the person being shot if it's not made by the person shooting or the person being shot or 
the person doing the act and the person receiving the act, not just shooting, slitting of truth, anything, whatever it is. If it is not made by the person doing the act and receiving the act, then it will not be admitted. But the court, in the case of R versus folks, has done away with that particular rule and said, no, if anybody is there at that point, any statement that the person makes when he sees a particular thing happen, that statement should be admitted as res gestate. So in the case of R versus folks, we have the son. Who saw when somebody was shooting, I think his father, and then he shouted, There is butcher. It wasn't the shooter that, that said there is butcher. It wasn't the shooty as well. <laughs> That's the person that's being shot. It wasn't the shooty that had, that said there is butcher. It was a third party entirely, the son. And then the court held that that son, the statement made by the son, is admissible as res gesti evidence. Do you understand? And the third rule, which is the one that I gave us ethic, where we have to first look at what did the court say before, that's in the strict contemporaneous and the other one, is that the act must be contemporaneous with, sorry, the statement must be contemporaneous with the act. That's the third rule. The statement must be contemporaneous with the act. And the case of R versus Bedington told us that where you had, you know, somebody whose throat was slashed, in the room and then the person came out and then the person saw a auntie or his auntie whatever it is and then he said oh auntie see what harry has done to me the court held that it was not done the the, the statement was not said immediately or in progress when the act was being committed the statement was made after it and therefore it wasn't applicable and also if you look at other cases as, as in the case of r versus christie where somebody was charged with assaulting a boy when the police came minutes after the assault has been concluded the boy looked at the boy looked at the man that assaulted him and said that is the man that assaulted me and then the court the court held that it was not said while the assault was in progress it was said after the assault has been committed and therefore it is not applicable it is not admissible as res gestae evidence and also we look at the case of R versus Stepper where the accused was said to have you know uh, committed assin on his own shop somebody looked at the shop and said your shop is burning and you are running away and that was 26 minutes after the court held that the statement your shop is burning and you are running away cannot be admitted because it was done 26 minutes after the act in itself was done and that's also the case of R versus Stepper and I told you that when it comes to civil cases, courts usually are not as rigid as they are in criminal cases. Obviously, because under civil cases, balance of probability, when you are proving your case, but under criminal case, it is uh, the prosecution must prove your reasonable doubt. So the court is trying to exclude evidence that is going to be prejudicial or detrimental to the innocence of the accused in question. And then you look at the case of Thompson versus Taravan, in that case where the court held that... Um, the statement, the statement made by, uh, the reason the court is doing this is because the court is trying to take away every fabrication that could have occurred at that particular time. The court is trying to take away fabrication from it. And then we look at the new uh, rule, which is the case of Ratton versus R. And uh, in the case of Ratton versus R, the court held that, no, let us do away with the strict contemporaneous rule and let us apply the, the new rule of sufficient contemporaneous rule, which was followed in the case of R versus Nile and Loon. Now, in R versus Ratin, there was a call that was made, and then the call was made at different time uh, to, to the act that was done. The act was done, uh, the, the woman made the call and said, oh, my husband is about to kill me. You can see that at different time, it came before the act was done. The court held that it was sufficiently contemporaneous, and there was no way that the woman would have thought of uh, or fabricated lies. And then, in the case of R Ratin versus R, the court added another element into what we regard as res gestae evidence and said that the court must have been satisfied. Now, when you are juxtaposing the common law rule of res gestae evidence with the uh, evidence act, you should know that that element of the satisfaction of the court must or it is not applicable under section 4. You know, Lord Weberforce said that the court must have been satisfied that the statement must have been made in such a spontaneous time that it, it will be impossible for the person making that statement to have concocted or fabricated facts. Do you understand? Now, while looking at that in relation to this, the satisfaction of the court is not needed here. What is needed is was the statement made at the same time or at different places, and it should be applicable, applicable as res gestae. 
But it's just that the other party that is arguing against that statement entering must also point it out to the court. Or so, although rather it is of it is of persuasive effect. Ratun versus R and the judge satisfying himself that that statement was made uh, out of spontaneity is only of persuasive effect and not of a binding effect on the, the Nigerian court. And also it was followed in the case of R versus Nile where there were two people fighting and then somebody came after, the police came after and then the other guy said, oh, that's the guy that fought with me and assaulted me. And then the court held that that statement that was made after was applicable. If you juxtapose that with the case of R versus Christie, where the boy after being assaulted saw a policeman and said, this is the man that assaulted me. The court in R versus Christie, while appli uh, applying the street contemporaneous, we said, no, you cannot admit this. But the court in R versus Nile and Loon said, yes, we can admit this because it is sufficiently contemporaneous and also if you look at the case of r versus andrew uh the court also used the sufficient contemporaneous rule and in this particular class i tried to juxtapose uh the nigerian uh, version of the sufficient contemporaneous rule i tried to juxtapose it with the uh, uh, uh sorry i tried to juxtapose section four uh, and also section seven of the old act with what we we have under this and then when you are when you are juxtaposing the both of them, you will see that now in Nigerian cases, as in the case of Sule versus uh, Sule Salau versus the state, Sunday Akpan versus the state, Okoko versus the state, Udo versus R, Tiki versus Allah, and Kumi versus the state, you will see that these Nigerian cases seem to be tailored towards a strict contemporaneous rule instead of the sufficient contemporaneous rule, which has been embedded into our act by virtue of section 4. Section 4 get, tells us that there are three things you must look at before a statement can be admitted as best guest evidence. You must look at the fact that the statement which is made is not a, is not a fact in issue. If the statement is not a fact in issue, then it can enter. But before it enters, you should know that it must be connected with a fact in issue so much so that we can say that it is forming the same transaction. For example, in the case of Sule Salau versus the state, where somebody said, the person that was being killed said, Sule is killing me. That was said in the same time that they were slitting the throat in so uh, that we can say that the both of them form the same transaction. Do you understand? That the both of them form the same transaction. And then the third one is whether they occur at the same time or at different times and places. If, if they occur at the same time, you are looking at strict contemporaneous rule. If they occur at different times and places, you are looking at sufficient contemporaneous rule. Therefore, it is submitted that both the strict contemporaneous rule and this uh, sufficient contemporaneous rule falls under section 4 and therefore are applicable under Nigerian law. So what Aguda and what Diallo were previously saying that res gets the evidence falls under Nigerian law, I'm sorry, it doesn't have bearing under the Evidence Act, but is applicable by virtue of Section 5A that says that the common law rules of evidence should apply or can apply, is wrong under the old Act. And under this new Act, you don't even have any of those sections correlating. You can't have a replica of Section 5A in this new Act. Therefore, our rules under the Evidence Act are such that the common law rules are only of persuasive effect or are used to interpret what has been stated in our evidence act for example if i want to interpret this at different time i will bring the rule of of uh, ratin and her to show the courts that this were done at different time the act and the the, the the act and the statement were done at different time now i'll try to persuade the court to see things from my perspective or from the perspective of these judges in the case of r versus but i cannot use it as an authority before the court and say oh because there is this principle it is binding on you and you don't have a choice but to follow it you can't do that but you can just make the court see reason from lord weber for see reason from other cases do you do you all understand so that exactly is where I would end my class for this morning. This morning's class is going to end here, where we'll be talking about uh, uh, the whole, the whole of it. So we we can say that yes, Section Four applies to our Nigerian law, and res geste does not apply as a common law doctrine. It only applies under Section Four and can be used 
uh, the, the, the cases under section 4 can be used to argue before the court persuasively uh, for the court to see things from those judges' perspective, but cannot be of binding effect on the court. What is binding on the court is section 4. Section 4 tells us that we have both the sufficient contemporaneous rule and then the strict contemporaneous rule. So does anybody have any question? I'm about to end the class in about two to three minutes. But before I end the class, if you have any question, please put it down in the comment section. Put it down in the comment section so that I would uh, I'll be notified and then I'll answer your question if there are any. Does anybody have any question? So if you don't have any question, please just put in the comment section no question because I want to give my final announcement before before I move on. If you if you don't have any question, just put uh, no question. Uh, Makoka said yes. If you have a question, please write it down. So this is the end of uh, res gestae evidence. So the next that we are going to move into ordinarily should have been similar fact evidence, but I want to talk about confession and admission. Uh, okay, somebody said something. Please, in exam, when talking about res geste, I think the only issue is whether or not it can be admissible. Yes, the, the issue in exam should be whether or not that particular statement can be admissible before the court. That's the issue. So let us say, for example, the, the case that I painted earlier when I said that uh, the gate man shouted, what case is on the board? Thompson versus Traveron. Traveron, Traveron, T R A V E R U O N. So, where oh, I'm trying to answer Max's question, when you have a problem question in exam, and then the, 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 you can hear a statement, uh, or, or you can see where a statement was written, David, David versus Fortia, F O R T I O R, David versus Fortia. And then when you can see a, 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 a statement, the question is the, 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 the issue is whether or not. The statement, Sule has killed me, is applicable before the, is, is admissible in court. Then you now start with, you know, we have stated the issue. So what's the rule? The rule is section 4, Abi. Then what are the other rules? We now have to bring out, under section 4, we have to look at whether it occurred at different time or at the same time. So you now bring out the cases that says at different time. Bring out the cases that says at the same time. Then apply those cases to what has been going up up. That's the uh, Sule has killed me. So did he, did he say Sule has killed me before? Did he say it after? Then which one we apply at the same time or at different times? So since section 4 encapsulates both the strict one that says at the same time and the sufficient one that says at different time, whether or not the, you just have to show that it was done in such a way that they couldn't have been concussion of fact or you know fabrication of fact fact do you understand and then you conclude oh it is applicable oh it is not uh, sorry it's admiss admissible oh it is not admissible that's all finish you end or else get stay do you understand but for you university of lagos students i've gone through the past questions and i think most of the time rest get stay is usually essay questions it's usually it's not so pronounced in problem question it's usually very uh, uh they just said that essay question so i guess with all this we should be able to pass that and then our next class uh, would be on evidence would be on Wednesday or Thursday. But tomorrow morning, I want to have company law class where we are going to talk about cap uh, capacity of uh, companies. Do you understand? You know that uh, capacity on companies under the former act has changed from what is applicable in this act. So when we talk about the capacity of a company, then we can now talk about the ultra virus when the company acts out of its capacity then we look at the fact that it has acted ultra virus 
Do you understand? So, but then we have to talk about the capacity first. And uh, that's what I'll be discussing tomorrow's class uh, at around uh, 10 thereabouts. I would love you guys to be around to watch the company law class as well. Uh, thank you so much for sticking in, uh, sticking around to, uh, to, to watch this class. I really appreciate your presence a lot. Please make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you like the video, and then I'll see you in tomorrow's class. And lastly, if you have any question, please, instead of putting it in the comment section here, please download the Sensei app. Sensei is spelled S-E-N-S-E-I. Sensei. If you have any question, download the Sensei app and drop the, 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 the question on Sensei app. I am definitely personally going to answer whatever question that I find on Sensei app. Thank you so much for being around. Bolari Wakuridi. Thank every single person for being around. I will see you tomorrow's Community Law class in the morning. Bye. Have a wonderful day.